Hi everyone, this is Pratima and in this video, I'll be comparing these three, the iPhone 13, the iPhone 14, and the iPhone 15. The iPhone 13 and 14 are still one of the best selling iPhones right now and if you carefully look at the spec sheet of these three phones, you are not going to find that significant of a difference. But, but there are differences nonetheless, so many of you might be confused about which iPhone to get, right? So let me go through all of them one by one. Alright, let's start with the price itself. Of course, the iPhone 13 being the oldest model, is available for a cheaper price of some $600 in the US and 53,000 rupees on Amazon currently. Likewise, the iPhone 14 costs $700 or some 62,000 rupees in India, while the iPhone 15 being the latest comes for a price of $800 or 80,000 rupees. Okay, in terms of design, as you can see, all three of them sport a similar look with flat frames, a square camera module, diagonally placed cameras, and of course, the Apple logo in the middle. All three of them are made of glass with a tough ceramic shield on the front. The sides here are aluminum and there is IP6A protection. So build quality is solid on all three. But weirdly enough, the repair cost for the back glass of the iPhone 13 is higher than the iPhone 14 or even the iPhone 15 for that matter. Upon doing some research, I found that the reason for this is, except for the display and the camera, other components of the iPhone 13 are attached to the back glass, so repairing just the back glass is extremely difficult, hence the greater cost. So this is something that you need to consider as well. Anyway, back to the design, both the iPhone 13 and 14 come with a glossy back while this year's iPhone 15 changes that by including a satin matte finish. This means both the older models are prone to smudging easily whereas even if you use the iPhone 15 without a cover, it's not going to get dirty like the other two. Now these phones may look similar but their weight distribution is a bit different. On hand, the iPhone 15 feels a bit more heavy and dense in comparison to the iPhone 14 and the iPhone 15. Among the three, I like the hands-on feel of the iPhone 15 better because of the slightly rounded edges and the soft satin back. Plus, if you're a fan of pastel colors like me, you will definitely like the color options of the iPhone 15. Then again, if you're someone who always puts a case on their phone, it's not going to mean a lot for you. But do keep in mind that the newer iPhone 15 comes with Type-C port, which opens a possibility for a lot many things, like copying files from SSDs directly or connecting your phone to an external display using a Type-C connector, which is not easily possible via a Lightning port on the iPhone 13 and even the iPhone 14. Okay, over on to the front, all these regular iPhone models come with a 6.1 inches OLED display with HDR10 as well as Dolby Vision support and a 60 hertz display. In terms of core quality, these three are pretty much the same too, whether you're watching uh, HDR videos on YouTube or watching Dolby Vision mastered content on Netflix. In fact, I found the displays on the iPhone 13 and the iPhone 14 to be pretty much identical, whereas the iPhone 15 is much brighter with a whopping 2000 nits of peak brightness. And of course, we get Dynamic Island on the iPhone 15, which in my opinion is a small but quality of life feature. I know it does not make that huge of a difference, but I've really gotten used to it and it also feels less intrusive than the huge notch on both the older iPhones. Uh, likewise, it's not noticeable that much, but the bezels on the iPhone 15 are ever so slightly slimmer as well. Okay, moving on, I also found a little bit of difference in the speakers of these three. Uh, the iPhone 15 is slightly louder and clearer than the iPhone 14 and the iPhone 13. If I have to rank them from top to bottom, I would really have to nitpick, but the sequence goes first the iPhone 15, then the iPhone 14 and 13 based on loudness, how full they sound and their clarity. Again, I have to tell you the difference is just marginal. Alright, next up performance. The iPhone 13 and 14 come with Apple's A15 Bionic chipset, while the iPhone 15 brings the A16 Bionic. And it comes as no surprise that the A16 is the more powerful of the three, hence uh, be it in benchmarks or stress tests, the iPhone 15 handles everything better. I uh, checked the sustained performance of these three iPhones after running Antutu five consecutive times, and the iPhone 13 and iPhone iPhone 15 showed more consistent results, while the iPhone 14 scores and temperatures fluctuated quite a bit. Again, benchmarks do not always reflect the best scenarios, hence in my real life gaming test I found that all of these three phones did a great job. 
I played Genshin Impact in the higher setting and 60 FPS mode and all of these three phones reflected smooth gameplay with minimal stutters. I found the game to be slightly smoother on the iPhone 15 but the other two iPhones held up very well too. Surprisingly, I expected an extra GPU core on the iPhone 14 to make the performance slightly better than the iPhone 13 but honestly that was not visible. As for thermals, the iPhone 15 gets slightly warmer while playing Genshin Impact but in games like PUBG, all of these three phones had a similar temperature and the gameplay was smooth on all three, no major differences whatsoever. I also did a 30 minute 4K video recording test and here are the results. We have the iPhone 15 being the coolest among the three. Likewise, RAM management is very similar on each of these three devices, but in comparison to the iPhone 14 and 15, app loading time is slightly slower on the iPhone 13. Um, not by a whole lot, but it is noticeable if you open heavy apps. This is basically because the iPhone 13 only has 4GB of RAM on board, while you get 6GB with the 15 and 14. So overall, if you want the best performing regular iPhone, of course the iPhone 15 is the fastest among the three and will serve you better in years to come. But uh, it's worth noticing that the other two are not far behind and for a normal user, what you get with the iPhone 13 and 14 is more than enough. Besides performance, I don't think I really need to go on about the software side of things on these devices. On today's date, all of these are running on iOS 17.1.1 and we know how good iPhones are when it comes to updates. Um, the only thing to note here is that the iPhone 13 being the oldest of the three will get one year less and two year less updates than the iPhone 14 and 15 respectively. Okay, finally, let's talk about cameras. So uh, we are looking at a very similar camera setup on the iPhone 13 and 14, whereas the iPhone 15 brings a new 48 megapixel sensor with in-sensor lossless zoom up to two times. And with a newer chipset and a bit of optimization, the iPhone 15 does better like 20% of the time. Uh, sometimes it is able to handle dynamic range better than the other two, sometimes shadow processing is better, and in almost all cases, glare control is done amazingly on the iPhone 15. But that's all the difference there is. In normal daytime and nighttime conditions, the images you will get from all of them are very similar and have very similar characteristics. You might uh, notice slight color differences in them where the iPhone 15 produces closer to natural colors while 13 and 14 tend to boost the colors a bit. And um, when you're zooming in, the details are clearer on the iPhone 15 thanks to the new 48 megapixel sensor. But if you're not zooming in, there is practically no difference in details whatsoever. So yeah, the iPhone 13 and 14 have competed so beautifully with the iPhone 15, I am seriously really impressed. Especially with the iPhone 13. It's a two-year-old device and it has given me some amazing portraits which have better colors and skin tone than the iPhone 14 and even the iPhone 15 for that matter. Having said that, I would have really liked it if the older iPhones could shoot 2x portraits like the iPhone 15 but that's not the case and if you like a bit better subject focus and depth of field, then you will like what the iPhone 15 has to offer. On a different note, I like the selfies from the iPhone 13 better than the other two. I think the subjects look more pleasing from it. When it comes to videos, you can shoot perfectly smooth 4K 60fps videos from all three phones via the main ultra wide as well as the selfie camera. If I really, really have to nitpick, I found the iPhone 15 handling dynamic range better in some scenarios and uh, like with the photos, it does a good job with glare control as well. When shooting cinematic videos though, you are limited to just an 80p 30fps on the iPhone 13, while the iPhone 14 and 15 give you options up to 4K 30fps with HDR turned on, so that's a slight disadvantage on the iPhone 13. Also, the iPhone 15 lets you go back and forth from the main to ultra wide to 2x lenses while shooting videos in 4K 60fps, while the iPhone 13 and 14 only let you do that in 4K 30fps mode. So overall, with the newer lens, the iPhone 15 has a bit of an advantage but if you only care about the core camera quality and if you're looking for a reliable point to shoot device, the iPhone 13 is completely fine. That too at a much lower price than the iPhone 14 and the iPhone 15. Lastly, when it comes to battery, Apple has iteratively increased the battery sizes of all three devices and because all of them have a 60Hz screen, the battery life on them is quite good, I have to say. The iPhone 13 and 14 gave me very similar endurance in my test, while the iPhone 15 lasted me a little longer. Um, to put things into context, I would get almost a full day of usage with the iPhone 15 on normal usage, while the iPhone 13 and 14 would last me 30 to 45 minutes less, which is not that big of a difference in my opinion.
Okay, so after watching this entire video, you might say, uh, Pratima, according to your test, the iPhone 13, 14, and 15 are three very similar devices with similar design, display, performance, battery, and cameras. So isn't it better that I go with the iPhone 13 and save some money? No, actually, I have a few more things to add. First of all, you will get better Bluetooth connectivity with the iPhone 14 and 15 because they support newer Bluetooth 5.3 instead of the Bluetooth 5.0 on the iPhone 13. Secondly, with every newer generation iPhone, Apple also upgrades the 5G modem. In our case, the iPhone 13 has Qualcomm's X60 modem, the iPhone 14 has the X65, and the iPhone 15 features the X70. So with every new generation, you are getting better 5G speeds. The iPhone 13 supports up to two eSIMs at once, apart from your physical SIM card, while the iPhone 14 and 15 supports up to eight eSIMs with two active ones. Now, personally, I can't think of a situation where any normal human being would have seven to eight SIM cards, but I'm just saying that you have the option with the new iPhone models, just in case. So everybody, that was my full in-depth comparison of the iPhone 13, iPhone 14, and iPhone 15. I hope I helped make your purchase decision a tad bit easier with my testing. Of course, if you're on a tight budget, but you want a good starter iPhone that can last you a few years, the iPhone 13 is your best bet. It nails at all the basics and you will practically get a similar experience with it as the newer models. But as I said in the video, it does come with a few shortcomings of its own. Hence, if you think making those small compromises is not worth it, then I would suggest you skip the iPhone 14 and go for the iPhone 15. The iPhone 14 is actually kind of like the awkward middle child who everybody overlooks. However, if you're already using the iPhone 13, I think upgrading to either the 14 or 15 is just not worth it. But if you're coming from the iPhone 11 or lower, then you can consider one of these three models depending on your budget and needs. Okay, so that was all for this video. I hope you liked it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and thank you so much for watching.